Okay, guys, you know that <clears throat> the, the blue epidemic, they are already inside with the vesicles, you understand? So, what actually happens is that when action potential comes, it's going to come and it's going to stimulate what the, that's what we call what the voltage gated as uh, calcium channels, you know? So, these voltage gated, gated calcium channels, they are going to open up, you understand? As a result of all the influx of action potentials. So, when this, uh, Let's assume this is this is your nerve terminal. This is your nerve terminal. Let's, for instance, guys. So we have our what, our vesicles here. So we have no epinephrine inside these particular vesicles, concentrated, binded to the what to the chromobranin. So in at this outer surface of these vesicles, you understand, there is a protein which is called the synaptobrevin here. It's called what? Synaptobrevin. The protein is called synaptobrevin. So, and you know, this is this, this whole uh, uh, diagram here is the what the nerve terminal, and this is the vesicle, the, uh, the vesicle found inside the what the adductor of the nerve terminal, nerve terminal. So, at this point here, there is a corresponding binding site of this synaptobrevin, synaptobrevin here. This one is this, this particular protein is called what syntex, guys. It's called what. Syntaxin. So, when the action potential comes, it's good. There's going to be an influx of calcium, influx of calcium. But at this point in time, what does it, the calcium do? What is the role of the calcium in what in the uh, release of these uh, neurotransmitters, guys? So, what they do is that uh, what at this particular uh, uh, part of this syntaxin is closed, guys. It's closed. This particular part is closed. Where normally the synaptic will come and bind to this syntaxin is closed. So what the calcium do, does is that it comes here, it binds to one end of what the syntaxin, or the other one binds to the other end of the syntaxin, and then what will happen is that you know, they say what like pole they repel each other, right? Like pole they do what they repel each other. So when this particular calcium binds, they're gonna what repel each other, and it's gonna what open up the what the side for this particular what uh, synaptic to come and bind. You understand? Know so when it binds. Now, synaptobrevin will now come and bind to this point here. So, when this synaptobrevin binds to this particular uh, syntaxin, it's going to fuse with the membrane. So, when it fuses with this membrane, there's going to be a, what, uh, a change in the conformational change of this particular membrane. You understand? And then, again, eventually, this particular no epinephrine will be what? Uh, uh, it will be released out of what? The, the, the nerve terminal through a process called exocytosis guys exocytosis so what are we saying here we are saying that what once uh, action potential comes you understand it's gonna stimulate the opening of what the voltage gated what calcium channels you understand once this voltage gated calcium channels uh we have influx of calcium so this this influx of calcium will now facilitate what the binding of what the vesicles what to the internal surface of what the, the uh, the, the, the internal surface of what the, the membrane of the nerve terminal, for example, which now facilitate what the exocytosis of the norepinephrine. So once norepinephrine is inside the synaptic plate, you understand? Now let's assume this is our nerve terminal, then we have our our receptors here. We have our let's say for instance, we have our receptors here. Let's see. Because uh, we have alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 1, two adrenergic receptors. Actually, there is a third type of a receptor which is called beta 3. But this particular beta 3 is a specialized form of what? It's a modified form of what beta 1 adrenergic receptors, guys. So, assuming we have our receptors here, and normally in this particular a sympathetic neuro effector junction because this is a good example of what a sympathetic neuro effector junction because these receptors could be found in any receptors guys it could be vessels it could be glands it could be muscles so it could be found in our uh, any receptors so let's say a good, this is our alpha one receptor this is our uh, beta one and this is our beta two and mostly guys the Alpha 2 is mainly found in the what in the presynaptic membrane, guys. So we have our what our alpha 2 
receptors here in the presynaptic membrane, guys. So <clears throat> when the when this particular norepinephrine is being released into the, what the synaptic, uh, the synaptic cleft, you understand? So it's gonna bind to these receptors, guys. It's gonna bind to these receptors. It's gonna bind to these receptors. It's gonna bind to these receptors. And it's gonna stimulate these receptors, guys. You understand? And depending on where this particular, uh, if uh, where the on which effectors these receptors are found, we're gonna see a corresponding what action corresponding to sympathetic what uh, activation, guys. So, but I would like to uh, talk about what this particular uh, alpha two adrenergic receptor because it's a very unique kind of a receptor. It's it's like the eyes. Of what? Uh, it's, it's like the eyes of what the presynaptic, uh, the presynaptic uh, uh, neurons. You understand? It's, it it communicates the concentration of no epinephrine found in the what the synaptic cleft. If there is, is, if if it's like an auto regulatory pathways, you understand? In which the what we have a regulation on the concentration of what the no epinephrine guys. So let me let me say something about this what uh, uh, receptors here. So now. This particular alpha 2 receptors is bounded to what G in the wifi proteins, guys. You understand? It's bounded to, it's, it's, really, it's, it's coupled, not by it, it's, it's, it's coupled with what? It with G in the wifi proteins. So when this particular alpha 2 is stimulated, now the G in the wifi proteins, you understand, is going to lead to what? To the hyperpolarization of this particular presynaptic neurons, you understand? And as a result of that, this particular neuron, which is we are because it's hyperpolarized. Why? Because there is increase in the efflux of potassium out of the cell, thereby increasing the level of electronegativity which is found inside this particular presynaptic what neurons, guys. So that is the first mechanism in which this particular uh, 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 alpha two regulate the concentration of what no epinephrine in the presynaptic membrane in the in the in the synaptic cleft, guys. The second mechanism is that, like I told you, is coupled with G inhibitory proteins. So now, when stimulated, it's gonna the G inhibitory pro proteins will gonna is it, it is going to lead to a decrease in the concentration of what adenylate cyclase. You understand? And once there is decrease in the concentration of adenylate adenylate uh, cyclase, you understand? There will be decrease in the concentration of what CAMP. And once there is decrease in the concentration of CAMP. There is also going to be decrease in the what in the concentration of what or or, the, or in the activity of what the protein kinase A, which is a very important enzyme, and this protein kinase A it plays a very very important role in the functionality of the enzymes which are uh, which are very important in the synthesis of no epinephrine. What are those enzymes, guys? We're talking about what the tyrosine hydroxylase. We're talking about what the dopa decarboxylase. You understand? All these enzymes. The, 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 this, all these enzymes they depend on the concentration of what of uh, CAMP on the to facilitate their function. So once this this uh, alpha two is what is in the, is stimulated, there will be decreased concentration of what CAMP in the what in the presynaptic what cytoplasm, and it will decrease what the, the synthesis of what no epinephrine on the which will reduce the concentration of what no epinephrine in the synaptic space, synaptic cleft, guys. So before we continue, I would like us to take a break.